You're listening to After the Review. After, after the review. After review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. Let's do it. Let's start this. All right, Terrell, what coaches you want to talk about? You called me here for an emergency meeting. <laughs> no. I mean, a lot of coaches are on the move, man. They are. Um, we got we got Lincoln Rally went to USC. Brian Kelly, LSU. We all know about that one. Then we got Crystal Ball who today or last night it's going to, to miami and i think yeah that's the biggest one on hold i only really understand that one as much as anything what um, do you mean i kind of i guess I, he's from there right this is all the mater he old. played he played there and ga there and coached oh, the line okay. and tight ends there oh okay okay my bad Never mind. <laughs> i didn't know he like i thought he was just from miami i didn't know he actually played there. Mm-hmm. he played there for okay a few years that's his alma mater Okay, that makes sense. When they call, you got to answer. I'll, but we talked about this last time. Like <laughs> it never ends well with the. It never ends well. Uh, um, you gotta. I think you gotta wait to the end of your career to really go back. I don't know. He's established though. This is a second head coaching position, right? But yeah, but he's all. I mean, he's he's kind of like this is it. Like you got to do or die here. If you don't win in Miami, you, I don't know if anybody's hiring. I don't know. Anymore. He had like. I'm so confused because he had a good thing building at o- Oregon. Like he was the only one in Oregon who, who like got these guys, like these West Coast guys. He got the big, like he had the big, big guys that usually SEC, like SEC teams usually have. He had that at Oregon. He built that up because he had that pedigree, and he just like jumped ship. Like you like had a foundation started. Now you're gonna like have to redo it. Well, like, I get it. Like you're in Miami, and you could probably recruit better there. But I just the conference it. is kind of worse. I would say. I don't know. You're you're about to have Lincoln Riley in your conference at the best school in the conference, so that's a problem. You just got boat raced by Utah twice. Like you're not close. They weren't close. I know they were banged up and hurt, but I mean, Utah beat the shit out of but them. Guys like like Thibodeau and like I don't. He's know. He's got. I, I get it. They had some toughness. They weren't like Oregon teams in the past, but they got. I, I know, mean, but like I just like but. He, I'm more like from a sense of he's like he just built the foundation. Like he's gonna have to literally go back and, and do the same thing. Um, and he just built that foundation. I'm just I'm so confused why he would. I mean, because like I, I understand dream like, job comes knocking. Dream, dream job comes knocking. You got to make things happen. Supposedly his mom's sick, so I'm sure that the thing. Too, Plus, like, well. who the hell wants to live in Oregon versus living in Miami? So nah, yeah. that's true. <laughs> Especially if but you're like, from Miami. Yeah, I guess that's a good point. Anyways. It'd be interesting to see who Oregon highs. I don't. I don't know who their guy is. Um, it's Joey Harrington. What do you mean, <laughs> ex quarterback? Yeah. I don't think he coaches, but there he goes, Oregon guy. Joey Harrington. Who else on the Oregon? Um, I, I think. I don't even know who their quarterback. Who was there? Legarrette Blunt. There you go, Legarrette Blunt. He's gonna. Yeah, Blunt. Like Dennis Dixon was back. Oh, the there you go. Um, yeah. Um, but no, those guys have. Oh, pedigree, no, right? absolutely not. So I'm sure there's somebody that has something. They, and they hired, they brought, Curse the Ball was on Tagger's staff, right? And they just mm-hmm. promoted was, him. So they, they, I believe so. Yeah, they, they really haven't looked for a coach since Tagger a couple years ago. Yeah, that, I mean, yeah, basically. So, I mean, they're, they're kind of shit out of luck. you think they would be prepared for those. They weren't ready at all, it feels like. Well, it kind of came out of nowhere. I mean, we heard whisperings. We heard whispers, yeah. Like, do you always – is that what you do, make a contingency plan when you hear whispers? Yes. It's kind of weird. Like, like serious – if you know, like – I mean, it was pretty reliable, especially after you saw what happened in the Pac-12 championship game. I would have been very prepared. Like, I would have been instantly making calls and ready to go. Um, yeah. That I, place. You're I, telling – I would t- love – what would Go you ahead. love? Uh, I was just gonna say you're gonna tell me A and M didn't have contingency plans if Jimbo got left for LSU. Like they were ready, I'm sure, absolutely ready. Mm. I, I have no idea who it would have been, but I'm sure they were ready. Anybody who wants to take that nice paycheck, I guess so. Anyways, all right. I would love to be a fly on the wall in all these interactions because, like, like you, like obviously your agent is out there talking to like University of Miami for you. You only your agent only calls you when like things are serious. Like, okay, cool. This is what they offer. You're like, okay, let's do it. Like, like what's the process you tell the AD? Do you just like call them up and like, hey, you know, I'm leaving, or do you just like let the AD like hear it through the news and like that's how you kind of go about it? I'm sure everyone's different, but like, what's that? What's that process? Well, like, 
I'd it, love to be on final off of that. It doesn't even sound like there is that process anymore. Like, Lincoln's like, yeah, USC called me. I had a 20-minute conversation, took a nap, and which I think is total bullshit, by the way. Uh, he seems li- slimy liar, right, on that shit. He had that, and he had three coaches ready to go that morning with him to USC. There's no way this just happened in a day. They probably— no, I- I legit think it happens that quick. I think you I think you always think about like I think you're always thinking about what's next for you, right? You're always like maybe taking a call, but then like some calls come around and you're like, Okay, this is interesting because I don't think like I believe his like I said his agent's probably talking to USC for like a couple of days or so and then all of a sudden USC is like, Let's just see if we can go get Lincoln Riley and like he picks the phone up like crap. And it makes things happen or whatever. I do think it happens that quick. You don't think it's super convenient that in the presser the night before, after they lost to Okie State, he was like, I will not be the head coach at LSU. You don't think that was super convenient wording by him? (laughs) Like he knew. He knew Saturday. He claims he didn't know Saturday night. And it's not the way he were answered that question, because it wasn't directly about LSU, even though that's what the reports were. The question was just about the coaching rumors. And he was very direct about LSU, and he did not go to LSU the next day. He went to USC. It was very convenient. Does it matter, though? I, no, I mean, no, it doesn't. But, I mean, I have I have a lot of plugins to the Oklahoma program, as you know. And, God, they were yeah. so, so butthurt about it. I've never seen a fan base or people turn on somebody so quickly. Like, Lincoln Riley was God to these people, and they wanted that man hung in the streets the next day. <laughs> Like, come Sunday. It's always, it's always how it is. Like, but you can't, no one, like, anybody in their right mind would do that. If, like, it doesn't matter what they did. Someone came, offered me, like, like, you know, I love what I do for my job. But someone came, offered me, you know, 100, 100, whatever, X time money. I'd be like, yeah, bye. Yeah, like, especially. I'm, do, I'm literally doing the same thing over here. Especially an upgrade. Like, let's be real. I listened to somebody who has, like, a real podcast. I think it was, like, an out, OutKick podcast or something. Those These idiots. And they're like, tell me what Oklahoma can't offer you that USC can't, uh, you know, can. And it's like, I mean, I guess living in L.A. is better than living in Norman. It's like, what are you talking about? Duh. Like, Norman, Oklahoma, uh, no offense, is Norman, Oklahoma. Yeah. Los Angeles yeah. is Los Angeles. I know it's a shithole city these days, but LA still has glitz and glamour for people like Lincoln. Yeah. Let let alone like they bought both his houses for over a million dollars of asking price. So there's a million dollar um, bonus right there. So they, I'm trying to see what what's the is the second house the lake house? Can we have we confirmed that or not yet? I, I don't know. I would assume maybe he has a ranch. You know, Jimbo sounds a like ranch. he's got like six ranches. Remember when he, he was talking yeah, he about said, that? He said he got, I got I got a ranch here. Like, he's got multiple heck? ranches here. He does? Mm-hmm. That's what he said. He said, Why I got... Why do you need multiple ranches? I don't know. Maybe one's on a lake, one's not, maybe. You know? Maybe one's hunting. You know, we could have some outdoorsy stuff. Who the, who the hell knows? But yeah, they bought both his houses in Oklahoma for a million over asking price and then paid bought him a $6 million house in L.A. Like, a $6 million house in L.A. is a good house in L.A. <laughs> okay? Yeah, it's a... It's a... Yeah, it's a solid house in it, L.A. It's six, it's six million? Yeah. And then they're paying him, what, $10 million a year? Yeah, the, the buyout money from all these coaches have been ridiculous. Like, they need to donate this money back to student loans. They're, they're 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 not giving that back. I mean, they're paying for nils now with that with that money that they're getting, yeah. or they're paying for their new head coach. But again, I like so. Then we go, yeah, let's go to Brian Kelly at LSU. Like, how the hell did LSU pay for this? They're paying like six coaches already on the freaking buyouts. Like, they paying them ninety five. I I did like that because we were sure t- it's backloaded maybe maybe I don't know because they're gonna want the guarantees all these people get all that guaranteed money now I do know Brian Kelly was not getting paid that much by Notre Dame relatively speaking especially for the success sustained success he was having at Notre Dame because Notre Dame's I mean let's be real okay they've been blown out twice in the playoff national championship blah 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 this Notre Dame has a not had a letdown year they're a top fifteen program every year. And I know the schedule, oh, yeah, not the same. But Notre Dame really kind of needed that. I mean, they were, I mean, they'd been down. Notre Dame had been down for what Notre Dame's standards are as a, you know, a classic program. But I did like. Oh, he's done a great job there. I, I, I just, he never showed up to the big game. But like, you know, he's gotten there though. Like, like that's a lot. You, I mean, the Gatineers, you know, have to battle sometimes or whatever. At least he's given them the fighting chance. Unlike some programs. 
like I know A and M. We've never even you know gotten the chance to even get there. I think we'd be happy to even. Well, sniff it. let's come out. We're comparing apples to oranges here. Let's be real. I mean, oh, you're not. You don't think A and M's on that level? Huh? No, no. I'm saying their schedule versus our schedule. Like, let's be real here. Yeah, even we haven't for, gotten even that. other schools. Like, we're not like we're the only school in the SEC West who hasn't sniffed it. Like, since Ole, I don't know. Ole Miss but, hasn't sniffed it. They beat Bama Miss, twice. It hasn't sniffed it. Mississippi State, State has Ole Miss, I guess. Yeah, Arkansas hasn't sniffed like, it. What do you mean? The, so you're saying Bama, Auburn, LSU have sniffed it. There you go. That's it. Yeah. yeah I guess that's true. I mean, we play in the but, best division in college football. It's the best coach division in college football by a long shot on top of it. I mean, the SEC East is bad. T- I mean, it's not very good. I mean, look at Georgia. Georgia kind of got uh, exposed. I wouldn't go that far. Who's good in the SEC? Kentucky is the second best team in the SEC East. Like, but like when Florida is good, it's it's a solid, Flor- it's a solid side too. Florida is really bad more often than they've been really good since Urban Myers left. Yeah, I mean that's yeah. factual. I mean Tennessee like, has not been good. Arkansas just became just just became good. Like so, like Mississippi State, like they've been up and down. I guess. Well, I don't know. Ole Miss, Mississippi State was A&M. good with Dak. Mississippi State was good with Dak. Yeah, when we were there. Then Ole Miss was, like, garbage. Like, like we all have, like, they all have, you, you can all pick at it. Like, definitely the West. I'm not fighting to say the West is better, but there, there's been times when they, it's been a little bit more even. Well, this year it's really been really bad. Well, let's let's just put it this way. Missouri hasn't been good since 2013. South Carolina hasn't been good ever. And Vanderbilt. Like, that's three. Oh, I forgot, yeah. That's, that's three, yeah, that's true. I mean, they're definitely, the SEC East is definitely worse. And, but I don't want to get sidetracked. I want yeah, to get back okay. to this. So, okay, so Brian Kelly, LSU, I mean, it's SEC. Whatever, these talks are good when we're all over the place. Um, I did like that my, my – I don't know how I found that source when they were talking about the contracts, how I said, you're like, they don't have any money to pay anybody, Pete. And I was like, somehow they said they have 90 – I read they have $96 million to pay, and Brian Kelly's contract was $95 million. <laughs> we were right on the button Please there. Spare. When uh, yeah, I mean, that's, that's good, good reporting by you. People were, t- I mean, because the first reports was like it was a fifteen million dollar a year contract, which is that made my head explode when I read that. No, just, that's sometimes people, they get they get a little outlandish. People, talk, people with talking the first reporting. Yeah, people just talking shit. Did you uh, did you see that video of him at the LSU basketball game? How he instantly became at O. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I saw that. And I was like, I don't know why he why he's doing that. So like, this is the whole thing. This is why like, people don't like Brian Kelly. It's kind of what I want to talk about. Is that like oh he's not a good fit? And like they like like they're trying to like Lincoln rally like oh he isn't a good fit fit either. But like anybody anybody who says a sense like anybody goes anywhere they're never really a good fit the first time. Bama was I mean like Saban wasn't a good fit. Bama when he first got hired probably that first senior class would probably tell you that he's the worst coach ever they ever had because they were really bad. When Urban got to Florida I'd be mean, like oh who who is this guy from Utah or whatever and, you know so oh. I think. Kelly's, if Kelly wins, he'll be fine. He'll fit well, right on in. He'll eat gumbo and, and figure it out. Urban, Urban won a national championship in two years at Florida, didn't he? Yeah, but as I'm saying, so like you win, you'll be fine. Well, like, like they'll be like, oh, they'll forget if you can fit in or not. You'll you will fit in. Oh, I mean, he'll take you on the wings. But I mean, I get it. Like Lincoln is from like small town Texas, and Brian Kelly. Yeah. Like it feels like they should have flipped, right? It feels like Brian Kelly should have been at USC, and Lincoln should have been at LSU. Just... I, yeah, but I would have loved to see Lincoln at LSU because I think he would have the dogs to do like to see like it would go back to that Joe Burrow year is what it would look like. Well, honestly, and I think it'd be really exciting. I, I mean, he was still recruiting those dogs at Oklahoma. They just didn't have any defense. So I'm saying, but like he like could recruit the defense too. Like so I'm saying, like like he could, even if he got like half of what LSU like normally gets, like those. Like, LSU is super talented, no matter, like, this year the team was super talented, even though they were bad. Like, half their guys didn't play because whatever reason. The, they, like, they're always going to recruit dudes because they just, like, that's they, what they do. They do have a mystique on defense a little bit. They struggle on offense. I do like, I mean, it's starting to move away from LSU as the defensive, you know, get, picking up the defensive guys in Louisiana, Texas, and it's moving to A&M, which I'm all for us being the defensive school. They're picking up guys, and we figure it out the rest of the way. Um, but yeah, I, I, I get, I, yeah, I get what you're saying there. Hey, I mean, Jimbo was like, a good I, fit. I mean, it felt like the right yeah, fit. Jimbo, I'm saying, like, we never questioned I think, it. I, no, I mean, I don't think you question, I don't think you really question Brian Kelly because you know, Brian Kelly's a good coach. I think it's just, 
you more question the fit. Like we knew, like it's Jimbo's like the Southern guy, so we kind of knew that would fit. It's not as, but Jimbo to Florida State to A and M wasn't that big as a, a jump stretch. Yeah, I get you. I get you. It's the a same kind of the other two. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's the same kind of play. I mean, I guess Lincoln Riley. I mean, he looks like L A. He looks like USC. He's a good looking guy. Yeah, but. I mean, I think I think he'll fit in right, right, right along, and they'll they'll be fine, and it'll be exciting to see. And I think he'll be able to recruit and get those California guys. I just. They I just have, want to know if he's going to be able to get the guys up front. Well, they the did. Nasty guys he, up front. Well, he got his quarterback, the number two quarterback next year, Malachi. He's from L.A. Yeah, I know he got Malachi, but I'm talking about like the big nasty. Oh, that's, oh, that's you want the big boys? Need you need some beef? Yeah, you gotta get the you gotta get the Samoans out there, you know, California, and get them to stay home. Well, is it much harder to out recruit them from? I mean, I guess Utah and Oregon are going to be. It might be fine now because everyone was like Crystal Ball's bouncing from Oregon, so it might be all good. I would, I mean, Utah maybe because Utah's kind of got the beef up front. Utah, those I mean, big boys. Whittingham's got his whatever he's got figured out there. He's got to figure it out. Oh my God, there he Utah. Just needs, he just needs like. Good, good. Well, go ahead. No, go ahead, go ahead. I was just like he's like he's got it figured out. He's just like missing like like those like real like athletes or the like, quarterback to break out. This I, system is, is is awesome. Their quarterback's pretty good. They they they're sick that they played Brewer to start the season. Brewer got benched through halfway through the third game and they came back and won. Like they were down they lost week one to BYU and then they ran the table. They they're sick. They slipped up against Oregon State and uh in Corvallis, Oregon it was State's pretty. Oregon State's pretty good. Though. They're okay. They're mm-hmm. solid. They're, they're not. Good. They let solid. me down in the uh, Civil War against Oregon because I picked them. I think, but, yeah, a lot of Washington State fans are going for them too, and they let them down too. Yeah, well. so they I mean, be in the Pac-12 championship game. I mean, it is a problem, but I I get it. Like, because they would have been. I mean, you could have made a serious argument to put to Utah in the playoff at that point. Over Cincinnati, if they won the Pac-12 and they had lost Week One with a different quarterback to BYU, who's a good team. BYU's ranked in the top fifteen, so yeah. it, it would have been a good loss. And then everybody would have said, "Yeah, no Oki State or no uh, Cincinnati." But Oki, God, I would have loved Oki State to win just to see what the committee would have done. Yeah, and make a little pressure on them. Yeah, I mean, because they're a bunch of cowards to begin with. We know that they're yeah. not. They're not set on anything. Well, they, they love it when their job's easy. They don't want to make an their act- job is super easy. They, yeah, they, they don't want to make an actual decision because like made it easy on them. Yeah, what what do you Alabama. what do you do if you're sitting there? Georgia just got smacked by Bama in the SEC championship game. They were wire to wire undefeated, basically the best team all year. No conference championship. Okie State one loss with a conference championship. Beat Baylor top ten team twice. Beat Oklahoma top ten team. Uh, Cincinnati runs the table, has a win against the top ten team Notre Dame at Notre Dame. I mean, what do you do at that point for two spots? You got three teams for two spots, and someone's gonna be really, really butt hurt that they got let out. Mm, I don't know. Yeah, they really got left off the hook, huh? Yeah, they, they made, it, you made it easy for them. They they really did. I was sick. I mean, that, that damn running back. But I don't really care. Hey, I would have let. Coach, we got on the move here. What? Sorry. Um, no, I'm trying to think. Who else? I mean. Nobody really. Well, well, oh, well, Venables just went. To oh the yeah, Ven- went to Venables to Oklahoma. He finally got out of the nest. I think one. Oh, you think the bad year did it for him? He's like, well, I can, I can, you know, it's time for me to move on. Well, what? Yeah, he think? came. He came out and said he was apprehensive about the Auburn job last year that he was offered, and he said, "I didn't." Excuse it. I didn't read into it, but he said he just like they gave a reason why he didn't take it last year, but I mean. He was the he worked at Oklahoma for twelve years. He's pretty much a Sooner, and he just oh ha- shoot, so that makes sense. Yeah, he worked under Stoops from ninety nine to twenty eleven. I looked that up today when I was doing my video. So he's basically oh. a Sooner. He was waiting for this. This was the job. This was this was the job he was going to take. What? Okay, was he position coach with uh, under Bob? I guess I, I th- he was a D coordinator and associate head coach. I believe. I think he started. At oh, position. what made him leave it? Go to Clemson then. Um, uh, maybe Clemson gave more money. Interesting. I yeah, could, I guess so. I mean, I don't know. It worked out. It was a much better move, obviously. Yeah. I mean, do we know? I mean, there is a lot of pressure. He's never, he's never head coach. He's never been a head coach before, so he's got to find an offensive guy. That I just that's my thing is like with these defensive coaches, and this is like I don't understand why they don't do it. Maybe they do do it. Like Kirby Smart drives me crazy. Like obviously, you know defense, like. Don't get this like bland vanilla offensive coordinator 
like who's not gonna be able to like when your defense fails, not gonna be able to pull you out of, like a shootout. Yeah, like go get you somebody who can like, hey, I got this one today because you know like your defense is great, but it ain't always gonna show up. You know, I just don't get it. That that's true. Yeah, he so he was the co defensive coordinator starting in '99 when he got there and linebackers coach, and then he took the same job at Clemson in 2012 when he left. So. Interesting. Yeah, very. It's not, and it's not with Stoops left either. either. Stoops no. Like, like, they, somebody must have wrote him a big-ass check, I'm sure, to go be that guy. Sure, is that when Dabo first got hired? I would, uh, that would lead me to believe so. 2012, that sounds right, I would think. But, yeah, you need a – like, that was the perfect combo with uh, – what's your – Saban and uh, Lane Kiffin. Because like, they, yeah, ideal combo. Saban figured it out. Like, my Saban was like, oh, I like – my defense is great, but, like, the way these offices are, like, we're not going to be able to stop everybody. Yes. Um, all the time. We need to get offensive coordinators who beat me. Basically, he went and got, I know what offense beats my defense. I need to go get guys that uh, do that. And that's yeah. basically what he's done. Because their offense has been, I mean, Lane's a spread guy. Uh, Sark's a spread guy. Bob was a big departure from his normal uh, move there. No, Dabo got hired in 2009. That's a weird that's just a whole. That's a weird thing, right there, the Clemson yeah, thing. Kinda, yeah, very strange. Good. But yeah, what so I, I, I was dying. I'm, I'm dying. You know who's gonna be the head coach of Oregon? It's gonna be Bob. At this point, they're gonna hire Bill O'Brien because somebody's gonna be you stuck know? with him. <laughs> oh my god. Maybe I don't know. It should be interesting to see. Um, who else here? Um, we've got there's some other names. The Virginia, Virginia, Virginia jobs open. The Virginia Tech job. They got their guy from Penn State. Uh, the, the Virginia... What other dominoes fell? Uh, oh, Joe Brady got fired. Isn't that weird? He got. What, he he, got, think... he, he Go got fired on a Sunday during a bye week. That was super weird. Like you thought they would have I given think... the new coordinator two weeks to be getting this adjustment going. Do you think it was like he was interviewing for other jobs? He was interviewing for these head coaching jobs. Maybe, but you're gonna... but you're allowed to do. I mean, you're allowed to do that. It's not like you're not. He wants to be. I've heard. I told you, didn't I tell you all this a few weeks ago that the Panther fans have been done with him. They said his play calling is atrocious in the NFL, and I kind of saw some of it. I mean, it's not all his fault. Like Darnold's receivers are trash. The Panthers drop the ball all the time. Darnold. DJ Moore's not trash. He can't catch a foot. I he can't catch a football. They, I, I watched them drop 11 passes against the Vikings this year. Like, it was a lot of bad. DJ Moore, Robbie Anderson, they're very inconsistent, that group of guys. The offense clearly ran through Christian McCaffrey, and McCaffrey went from the guy who never missed a down to I can't stay healthy. To talk about the biggest robbery in NFL. Like, yeah, good God. Cool. He's – sorry. I've, un, I've, un, I've pent up fantasy aggressions towards him. Oh, me too. Me and Riley have him too, and we just don't know. We don't have Chuba either, so we're screwed. We just, he's literally just a placeholder. I mean, it's a keeper's league, so I mean, that may be the only reason why we still have him on the roster, but it's, yeah. it's upsetting. It's very – I get it. but So, yeah, Joe Brady apparently was not a good – not as good of a play caller in the league, which makes sense. I could – I get it. Yeah. Does, now, does he go back to college? Uh, I I find it hard. Like NFL, like once you go to the NFL, you kind of want to be an NFL guy, you know. If you're trying to be, maybe you, maybe. maybe you should. Maybe it's time for me to rebuild your your reputation. Though I don't know. I someone's got to take you on as an OC then. Yeah, I mean Brent. No, Brent already hired. They hired a, a Tremby from a Ole, oh, Mi- Ole Miss's offensive coordinator. Oh god, what's his name? Oh, he did. Yeah, he hired. He hired oh, Mrs. Uh, yeah, oh, uh, Jeff. Oh, Jeff Levy. Jeff Levy. Yeah, he hired Jeff Levy. Jeff Levy. Oh, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. I've heard that name before. Why have I heard that name before? Because he's. Where the, else has he been? I don't know, but he's the offensive. Co- he was the offensive coordinator at Ole Miss. So, under Lane, I don't. Again, I think this is an interesting move. He's getting an offensive guy who knows the SEC. Because I mean, you're prepping for the SEC at this point, and that's yeah. what the Brent, uh, the Venables hire is like. You need defense to play in this conference. Everybody knows that. Um, but it's just kind of weird. He's never head coach, and Levy's never called plays. I don't think because Kiffin calls plays. And um, really, at Ole Miss, yeah, he's only. I mean, he's only been at Ole Miss since 2020, and then he was at UCF during their domination, 2018, 2019. So 
name sounds so familiar. He's a young guy. He, uh, let's see, coached at Victoria Memorial High School <laughs> in Texas. Wow, what a maybe that's why it's maybe that's why. Um, he played at Oklahoma, I think. It looks like did he play? Yeah, playing career. Uh, nope, he didn't play. He had a career-ending injury. But he went to Oklahoma, so yeah, I don't know. Weird. It's just it's. I don't love taking a risk on guys who have never head coached before and never called plays before to be a play caller because it's kind of a big risk, especially at a school like Oklahoma. Yeah, he kind of looks like Matt. <laughs> Is that... Uh, you gotta roast. Like, no, no, it's not, not, a, not a slide of Matt or anything like that. It's just funny um, that you see that. Oh my God, he kind of does. I just looked at the picture. Just not missing. Really. <laughs> he really, he looks like an angry Matt. Matt's way too happy. Maybe I just know his name because he used the OC at um, it. Ole Miss. Ole Miss. Yeah. yeah, but that's kind of feels. Oh, like... was he? He was there during the Baylor stuff. Oh wow. Oh yikes! 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 Big yikes over there. But hey, that makes they want these explosive offenses. I get it. No, yeah. it, it's looking well, that's good. That's all right. That's a good hire. Yeah. Good hire. Okay. It's it's a little bit of a risk. It's scary. Yeah, I guess he wants to call plays because Lang doesn't. That, that's why the reason why these guys leave. I'm always confused by offense coordinator to offense coordinator because they want to call plays. Yeah, that's definitely what it is. I mean, you saw with uh, Michigan's new D.C. that he got uh, – that uh, – that left Baltimore because he's not going to call play defensive play caller in Baltimore. So they let him go so he could call plays in Michigan and it's changed that entire program, team, everything about him. Nice. So, uh, um, who yeah. else we got? Oh, the Billy Napier hire. That's a good one. Yeah, sure. Florida. Small school. He wanted the LSU job, but I guess Scott wasn't about it. Yeah, Scott's not going to hire a guy who coached the Raging Cajuns, even though he's in their own backyard. Wait, wait. There's, I know, but Scott Scott wants to splash. Yeah, I know. That's what I'm saying. Scott's never going to do that. He's which I mean, it would have helped you on the Cruton trail. It's not like he's not Cruton people. He's got all the Louisiana yeah. ties. You'd feel it. Sure. I um, they hired my boy Hockey to be a strength and conditioning coach. There you go. He was the guy who was here last year uh, when somebody was here. So um, uh, how about your? Are you? Has, I'm surprised anybody from the coach, someone coaching era, ever got a college football job again. To be honest, uh, what's the name of coaches for in the NFL? Who? Uh, what's the, his name? The OC, the receiver coach, the receiver coach. Oh, he coaches uh the the, the Eagles receivers. No, oh, that makes a lot of sense. The worst receiving core in the league. <laughs> Moorhead, um, he coaches the Eagles receivers. Yeah, that, it perf- well, he coached. No, well, he was there with Peterson, so he might not be there anymore. Oh, but um, the worst, still the worst receivers in the league. Great, you, great example, Banks. Terrell. <laughs> great example. Uh, Bank Banks is Banks is doing all right. Yeah, Banks, he's doing all right. <laughs> yeah, you I sure think, about that? I thought the mon- I thought the monkey it today. The mo- monkey gate. We got monkey gate monkey over here. Bite. He also uh, yeah, he lost his dream job because of it. No, nah, I think they were keeping that guy regardless. No, I heard I, uh, they weren't going to keep him. I, I think early, I think early on like, he had a chance, but once that the guy they, they the guy they kept, he got the team rallied behind him, and it was it was easy to keep him. That was that, the right decision by them. Yeah, no, I I'm not going to disagree. It, Monkey Gate did not help though at all. You don't need yeah. a, no Monkey Gate did not help. You don't need. I a, think who else was on the staff? Oh well. Uh, his guy, his he DB coordinator at Texas as well, though. Uh, right now, more um, more Swiss cheese. You mean the DBs that gave up fifty to Kansas? That yeah, Kansas football, is, not Kansas basketball. Yeah. <laughs> well, the receiver coach, running back, running back coach, is still the head coach at uh, Texas Southern. But that's yeah. what he wanted to do. Yeah, that's fine. Um, I think who else? It's, Banks talks about Banks. The price is still there. Price is still at A and M. I yeah, think, but probably, t- to uh, where's uh, what's the DC? What was the DC? Who Chavis? Name? Yeah, where is he? I don't he's think he's like coaching life. He was like a hundred years old. He's probably <laughs> retired. Nobody. Also, nobody wants him after what he he looked like. Probably after his end at LSU and then A and M. No, he went to Tennessee, right? No, he is. He went to Arkansas and got fired. Arkansas, that's right. So that's yeah, right. after being at Tennessee, after being trash at LSU, trash at A and M, trash at Arkansas, mm-hmm. he kind of got the boo. He's not employed, which makes sense. So, oh. 
Yeah. Okay. I, again, worst coaching staff I could, could always descend on the Adam round hole. Um, we're about to have NFL openings too, which is exciting. That's more. Who's coach. the first coach fired? Other than outside of Mike Zimmer. He was. He's not gonna get. He was gonna get fired today. We play on Thursday. That's the only reason he did not get fired today, because we play on Thursday. You can't give a yeah. sh- new coach a short week. Um, it's him and Nagy. Nagy's gonna be fired. They're the worst offense in football. The Bears. Yeah. And it's. Jesus. Justin Fields. Look, coach. Justin Fields looks terrible. Let alone he's hurt. But. Yeah, it's he, he didn't like that. Terrible is a strong word to use. He didn't look very good. Let's put it that way. he looked very overmatched in in the league, especially from a quarterback standpoint. No, you're like you're the only person to say that. Really? He has. I know you don't like him. Have you, you seen his? I, don't, I know you don't. Like, have you seen? I know his you don't like numbers. Him. His passing numbers are I know atrocious. You don't like him. Yeah, but his know, passing but numbers are atrocious. You don't like him, so I'm not gonna have this fight with you. Yeah. Okay. His numbers are bad, and he's also not Lamar Jackson. His numbers from, are. His, his numbers are bad, but he hasn't been atrocious. He he hasn't been good. He's they have the worst offense in football. Who's he who's he throwing to though? What do you mean he's got Allen Ro- he's got Allen Robinson? Bro, have you actually watched the Bears game? Yes, I actually have. Andy Dalton actually can move the ball between the twenties. He's just terrible in the red zone. I don't know. I think between him and Dalton, it's not too, too much better there. I mean, Dalton is definitely an upgrade currently at quarterback. No. I'd say so. Let's see. His Twitter, his God, it doesn't have his career number. Stackhouse, you're killing me on this. Bad. <laughs> Let's, I mean, of course, if you're going to pull his numbers up, straight numbers, and not like actually watch the game, then his numbers aren't going to be great because the Bears' offense is bad. But so. that's on. But that's partially on him, though. I mean, he did have a 100-yard rushing game. That's good. No, I mean, like, I'm not saying he's great or anything like that, but he, but it was between him and Lawrence who's played better. Probably the same. Um, his team is better than Trevor Lawrence's team. No way. Who has better? Who has more weapons? Him or Trevor? He Lawrence? literally he has Allen Robinson. What are you talking about? Trevor Lawrence does not have an Allen Robinson to throw the ball to. Allen Robinson's a Tre- very good receiver. He is, but like, do they throw to Allen Robinson? I I'm assuming because all these Bears wide receivers still get scooped up in fantasy. Like Mooney just was like the number one target this week in fantasy. No, For- Allen Robinson hasn't even. Pa- I was have played in like. Two or three weeks. There you also, go. they don't throw the ball to Allen Robinson. Neither. They, like, neither you literally don't. Like, Justin Fields hasn't played in two or three weeks either. <laughs> I know, but I'm saying like, like they're just like I've watched it and they they don't throw him the ball and it's not like Fields' fault. They just don't do it. And I don't know what Nagy still is. Like they go to the red zone, they don't even give my man a look. And they throw I would to say Jimmy Trevor Graham. Lawrence, they throw to Jimmy Graham. Yeah, that was horrible. God. What do you mean Jimmy Graham has playing. had two touchdowns? Jimmy Graham's a walking touchdown. I know, touchdown. but I don't know why they're still playing Jimmy Graham, though. <laughs> God, they got nothing else. Um, Trevor Lawrence, I actually watched the Jags game a good chunk there. Man, the Jags, they're just bad, the Jags. That's that's more on how bad the team is. Trevor Lawrence looks fine. He, he doesn't. They don't do anything to blow my mind from an offense. Urban's offense is bad, the NFL. It's not good. It's, okay, so, yeah, it's, it's probably bad. Oh, uh, what's Schottenheimer's offense? I mean, you see what he did in Seattle. I mean, Seattle's in probably OC probably too. Um, who's so? Well, who do you think gonna get? We got Zimmer, Nagy. Um, who else on chopping below? Joe, uh, Joe Judge in New York. Really? Dude, the Already? Gi- the Giants are horrible. He's a bad coach. Ready to fire him? Yeah, people say he's a bad coach. Like he's like that raw raw. He's that raw raw bullshitter guy. Plus, they got a new GM, don't they? Or is Gettleman still the GM? Yeah, they got a new G. They're gonna get a new GM. So you got Judge getting fired, possibly. Um, who else? I mean, possibly. It depends. Yeah, I would say yes because Russell Wilson's gonna be playing quarterback for them, and he's gonna Fangio. Want... Um, Fangio, maybe. Um, I I would fire him for not kicking that field goal last night at halftime, right before the half, and going for it against the Chiefs yeah. in a ten three game. Yeah, Fireball. Okay, so Vangio we got four because you think Joe Judge is gonna get fired. There's normally seven. Um, I think seven to eight is the average. Seven to eight. I I don't. Th- I think we had. I don't know if we have that much turnover this year. Pete's fifty fifty. Who? Pete Carroll. 50, Pete? 50, Pete's fifty fifty. He just he literally just resigned. They're gonna force him to retire. When do you resign this yeah. year? This year, or last year, yeah, they're he's gonna, like signed for like twenty twenty six or something. They kind of right? want him. I, it sounds like they want him out. They want fresh. They want to start anew. It's. It sounds like they're about to blow this thing up. They're gonna fire their GM. 
They're gonna fire Pete. He just resigned too. They're, they're gonna maybe they're, the GM's gonna fire Pete then, and he's gonna get his head coach because Pete was hired before the GM was. And then yeah, maybe, Russell but, Wilson's obviously I, Russell Wilson's demanding a trade. I think. Yeah, he need they need to trade him. They don't, it's, I would he doesn't need to demand it. They need to trade him first before he even says anything. Yeah, but yeah, I already got you. here's your ticket. You already got you gone. Yeah, he's bad. I mean, what? But I mean, do the Giants have? I'm a, the Giants are gonna have draft capital to get up for him because it sounds like the Giants. From everything I understand, is Aaron Rodgers gonna be playing for the Broncos? So Fangio may not get fired because um, he's gonna land Aaron Rodgers, and Russell's gonna go to New York. So that's. Everything I would, I, if I was a betting man, I'd put those two bets down right now. That Rodgers is on the jo- Broncos and Wilson's on the Giants at this point okay. next year. So only you only got four or five head coaches getting fired. Um, God, let me look at the standing. Who's bad? Uh, any chance they fire David Cauley in Houston? Uh, nah, it's not his fault. I mean, but yeah, they didn't want him to begin with. Yeah. It would be really bad luck if they'd fire him at the point. Well, they could say, like, a a real NFL, like, okay, so say you get, like, a real head coach that you want that's available. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, like, I wouldn't, like, wouldn't, like, surprise me if they made that move. Um, I could see Bruce Arians retire if they win. If he Super- wins? Yeah, if they win another Super Bowl. But they're gonna, they're just gonna hire, um, uh, Leftwich. Do you think it'd be Leftwich or Todd Bowles? Could be Todd Bowles. I want Lefkowitz. I'm going to be selfish here. I want Lefkowitz. Don't you want the guy from the Bills? Oh, he's good. I'll take either of those. I'm fine with Dable. Yeah. Um, either one of those is fine. Um, any chance Stefanski gets fired? No. No. They're fine. Um, Urban might get fired. Urban. It's just after one year. If anybody's getting fired after one year, it's Urban. But Yeah. Um, Vegas, I mean, they have an opening technically. I don't know. They if have an opening, so we didn't we didn't yeah. count them into the yeah. equation. I don't even know if I don't know if they're gonna keep that guy, who's currently the. Hey, I'm sure. Oh, I heard 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 Rumble it, when I searched Dabo. His name Raiders came up next to his name. Mm, that'd be interesting. Dabo jump ship already. I guess maybe no, if Venables. I, I mean, there's word Venables might put pick Clemson clean of all their reasonable talent coming up. Really? Yeah, I mean, cause that that's that's what this rumor went around. So like last week, a snap, a private Snapchat photo got leaked of like Venable's son, who's on the Clemson, the quarterback, and another guy on the team were throwing the horns down, and they said sooner, and it was relatively recent because the quarterback DJ had a he had like a ta- he had like a splint on his pinky in the game the week before and he had it in the photo so that's how like they referenced that they knew this was a recent photo because internet is gonna internet and they're sleuthing this shit out so they might be picking picking clemson clean for some talent here in a second what we'll they got see. uh i mean i could see Dabo's message gets a little old after a while to those guys when Maybe. Uh, you have to kind of judge him like he was i mean they were okay, I guess, towards the end here, but oh, yeah, I think they're fine. I, I think one year after, I think, I think you just don't like Dabo. You well, have, no, when you have your I, mindset on something you don't like. Well, no. To be fair, I've watched him get out coached in the playoff twice in against Ryan I know, Day. You don't like Dabo though. Okay, did he or did he not get out coached? I don't like him. He did get out coached by Ryan Day but, twice. Last two games he's been yeah. in, and he won a national yeah, championship I, with a tri- I don't two tri- think that- Okay, he's you know got... what? I just want to hear. I want to see the move for you. I can say I can fully feel like okay, they're in jump shit. That's I see move. okay. I I just uh, D- D- it's I get the things because Dabo when he doesn't have a NFL transformative talent uh, as his quarterback has been very just kind of okay. Like they were solid. Like Clemson was solid before Deshaun. They would always lose to Florida State and Jimbo, and they would then lose another game, and then. They got Deshaun Watson, and then they became, now you know, national championship squad, which it's fine. I'm I'm not gonna I I'm gonna give Jimbo another year before I start saying all that stuff because I feel like everyone's due for a down year. Um, we'll that, see. Yeah, that's I mean that's fair. No, absolutely. I'm just I don't uh, think I don't think he's a very good in game coach. I think he's a great motivator and recruiter. I just don't know if he's a great X's and O's game adjustment guy. And, may, and maybe he's not, and that's why he has these great uh, coordinators. 
That's that. Oh, we're about to figure out though. Yeah, that's very, very, very fair. I just because yeah, yeah, I haven't. I've hated his like, game plan. Sometimes like, but sometimes that's why they hire you is because you know you know who to hire the right people and. But that's also what they are to not jump ship real quick. But like that's yeah. why they hired Brian Kelly at LSU because they didn't want like a, a like, the last two guys that had been the rah rah guys. They wanted the X and an O guy who, if things you, go wrong in the middle of the game, you, he can change it. Let's be fair. You can recruit all the talent you want. You still gotta, you gotta still have be able to game adjust, make decisions in game to win these top 100%. level, the top level games. No, one hundred percent. Like if you want um, mid major, hey, mid major school, get a rah rah guy. Give me a guy who can recruit, and we can win ten games uh, every year. So supposedly this is this is Oregon's like initial list of people. We got. Justin Wilcox, the Cal head coach, I think he played. Okay, Cal uh, is bad. Not, just, Cal's bad, but he's actually a pretty good coach. Um, Chip Kelly, we all Obvi- talked about. Don't think it's gonna happen. <laughs> Obviously, the, uh, Auburn head coach. For some reason, they think he'd come back and go to Oregon. Maybe. Oh. The, uh, okay. Brian, I don't think he's going anywhere. He's got a good setup in there and all. Yeah, They're it was just setup. a disastrous end of the season. Yeah. Minus, you know. Um, uh, Clemson's OC, Tony Elliott. That makes sense. Okay. They want to go back to that. Yo, um, if they uh, hire, football. if they poach both of Davo's assistants, Davo got one year left at Clemson, or they're get, or he might be jumping ship. <laughs> yeah. Because then it's all, uh, then it's all him. Yeah, it's all, it's all him for sure. Boise State's head coach. Oh. Okay, West Coast guy. Makes sense. Um, I think he was Oregon's, I want to say he was Oregon's defensive coordinator the last two years. Then like their last pack, so that make that might make sense. Matt Campbell don't make sense for him to leave Iowa State. I feel like if he had left for something, it would have been the Notre also, Dame. Been kind of mad. It was the Notre Dame. Yeah. yeah, they had a okay. How can Brees Hall set the record for consecutive games with a touchdown and you have such a mediocre year in the Big Twelve? I don't. That's yeah. He seems like a rah rah guy. He's definitely a rah rah guy. Uh, nothing wrong with a rah rah guy. Though. Uh, I kind of um, want I want an X's and O guy if I'm trying to win a I mean, national they championship. All have, they all have X's. They all X's and O's, but like I think when it comes like during the game, they're not like X's. They're not like they're not heavy in X's and O's type of deal. They're not out there trying to like make plays. They're more just like okay, well, like why aren't we doing this? Let's do this. Um, I just I don't know. There's like there's ex- examples of good examples of it. and There's bad examples of it. Because so sometimes I think offensive coordinators just get too overwhelmed with calling plays that they lose sight of like the smaller things in life, like. Field position, timeouts, which are really important. <laughs> okay, and other things like that. I'm so. a thou- I'm not even like ten percent with you, a hundred percent with you. I'm like ten thousand percent with you. We need some goddamn timeout people. We need a <laughs> game management guy for every coach in every Power Five program, NFL team. It's a goddamn embarrassment. There are no worse people at game management than Mike McCarthy and Mike Zimmer. I mean, it's hilarious how bad they are with timeouts in situational football. At, at the end of the half, at the end of games, it's, oh my God, we need a game management guy. I want a guy with an iPad that gives me a, I want the sheet printed out. We know when to take timeouts, where, who can take timeouts, where. It's, uh, I'm, I'm so with you. Yeah. We, Dan Campbell, we talked about it, and literally that next week, it was a great example of like he needed one. Because that was like the first week he started calling plays, or the first, second week he called him plays. And then the defensive coordinator was wanting a timeout. And, like, I don't think Dan really understood why they needed a timeout, or maybe he did in the headset. But, like, he just called for a timeout, and he called back-to-back timeouts. Pen- and he got ability, and he, like, lost both timeouts, and then they didn't have enough timeouts to, was to get the ball back or something like that. Yeah, okay. Was it yeah, he's bad with timeouts because he was bad on Sunday against Minnesota too. He was bad timeout yeah. management, and that's why they had no timeouts. Saying, like, Not like they needed them, but. But I feel like there's a lot going on in a game, and like to call plays and manage time. Like people do it, obviously. Don't get me wrong, but to call plays and like manage the clock, timeouts, and all this other stuff, um, I feel like there's just a lot. Yes, there is. Unless you have, yes, you need somebody in your ear be like, "Hey, here's the situation," like. Especially because it gets confusing and it's tough decisions. You have to like give them decisions sometimes so they like know the decisions. Like timeouts before the two minute warning or after. Like do you already save them for after the two minute warning? You know. Because yeah, it's just not like hey, let's call a timeout. You got to think about like the other side, like why you want to call a timeout, like what position we in, like yeah, all this other stuff. I yeah, I legit think there is one. I think we should petition 
to get on someone's staff to control the timeouts. We're going to have to be super smart guys. Probably had to get some analytical work in. We don't. But I, it's all right. I'm we, do it. I mean, it'll be easy just to have a chart. We know how long the, the play clock's 40 seconds. We could do math. We just have a chart with all the math numbers on there. All right. We have the chart fill, figured out for us. Um. Yeah, we got it all. Any anything we, inside we are of right there with him inside of five minutes. Okay, first half. I know first half. You don't worry about like timeouts inside. Yeah, the first, first half. half we're not. But I think I think we're in, we like I think we need to sit in a booth though because I think we need to be like, hey, let's challenge that. Hey, like no, let's not challenge that because that also goes in timeouts too. That's so fair. I think we need to be challenged and timeout guys. So we also we need to be in the booth. So we're we're looking at the replay where we're like, yeah, this is worth the challenge. This you know. The, uh, you got to weigh the yeah. odds. Yeah, weigh the odds down. It doesn't. The problem is the NFL is so bad with their uh, officiating. It's all over the place this year. They got the eye in the sky making calls when you don't even know they made a call, and then yeah, it's, I like that though. I do like it, but it's there. It's getting weird. It's getting a little weird right now. Okay, like what they review and what they don't review is getting a little weird. And I, I just think, think it helps and stuff like just keep the game moving. Something's going. I also want to petition. I did. Okay, good, good. Go ahead. Uh, I, I, I was doing that. I was doing that this year in the, at the UW games. Yeah. I was like the guy who brought out a little re, it's a replay deal. And I was like, like li- I listened to heard a bunch of stuff. So I was like, yeah, it'd be much easier. Like, you guys don't need to call this ref over. So look at this monitor just to tell him that you have to confirm this call. Just be like, hey, we confirmed the call in, like, in the headset. He just tells everyone on the field. So, like, we don't have to stop the game. Yeah. Because, like, most of the time he would get, get he would get come over. And they'd be like, all right, we're, we're keeping the call. Like, okay, cool. And give it right back to me. Uh, I was like, this is a waste of time. Like, So I do like the eye in the sky. I think it's just like it's tough for, for people who are watching the game because they don't know what they review. But from the Pac-12, like, no, from my experience, they review every play. Mm-hmm. And they obviously stop the plays when they really think they need to, like, overturn it. They don't have enough time. But I just think they, they review every play. And they try to get every play in. But sometimes guys go, go just go so quick. It's wild. Yeah. Like, it's, like, not enough time. They do. And – um. But yeah, I get it. Like easy, like ink, like catch, no catch, like out of bounds. Like when it's easy, like one replay, foot, yeah, buzz it in, blast is incomplete. That's easy. I hate the way they officiate though. Did you see Mike Variable like roast the NFL officials from that Chiefs game last uh, Monday night? Like uh, about the Kelsey catch, catch fumble or whatever. Uh, I kind of missed it. Well, I forgot. I forgot about that. What, uh, what happened? So there was like a catch fumble apparently last night with Kelsey, and uh. They upheld the call because they said the third. He had caught the ball, tucked it in, took a third step, and then it got knocked out. But they said it didn't count because there was not enough time, which is like they're like another element of the catch's time frame. And Mike Vrabel just tweeted out the own NFL's rules, and it says, you know, two feet inbounds, secure the ball, and then a th- either it goes either a a football motion, i.e., third step, you know, turn up field you know, shit like that. And then it says, yeah. or a substantial amount of time, not end or. So once you take that third step, it's a catch. You have the ball. It's a catch. It's a catch and fumble. So it's just like the NFL officials. I mean, it, it's not me. It's not just me. I know I'm on them all the time. They have been really wow. bad this year. And everybody seems to agree with that. I think, I mean, I've won Matt over on this one and he's normally not super harsh on officials. No. They, they have been very bad. I, I don't get but. it. Is it they don't know the – I actually – I kind of do get it. It's not being talked about what's going on, and it's very obvious what's going on with the NFLs and their officials. They have they have no minor league system. They hire bad officials. They promote officials that probably shouldn't be promoted for reasons. And then they have the whole new guy who's calling the shots, and he's terrible too. So, yeah, it's, it's just – it's, it's been very bad. <sighs> It's it's a shame because right. it's really not hard, and it's gonna play into gambling. Like it, we're we're got like everybody's about to get legalized sports gambling. I'm assuming here soon. It's a multi billion dollar year industry, and they don't have full time officials. And the casinos are pissed. I heard the books because it's like they people you lose you know if we lose faith in the officiating, people aren't gonna bet this shit. No, not at all. So yeah. Oh, what? do you want to finish up coaching? Um, That's why I'm here. Sure. What else? What else? What other coach? I forgot Texas Tech hired, hired Joey McGuire. Who? Texas Tech. They hired Joey McGuire. Oh. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, Ch- yeah, yeah, yeah. they're also about to get uh, Quinn Ewers, I heard. Oh, they are? Yeah, that's what apparently uh, 
the message boards have it sussed out from a guy who's a drug dealer in South Lake, <laughs> knows Quinn Ewers, and uh, the freshman wide receiver from Minnesota who played at South Lake last year too, mm-hmm. and he's like, yeah, they're they're going to Tech confirmed. They know. It's like, oh wow. Yeah, I don't, I don't. I mean, it's a drug. The guy's source is a drug dealer from South Lake. So take it. Let's take it with a big grain of salt. But I mean, I get it. He, don't, why would you want to go to Texas? That's there, and then I don't, I don't know. know. Why would you want to go to Lubbock? Oh, come on. You would. Nah, I, he was, he was in I mean, he has to start. The problem is, he has to start this year. If he doesn't start this year, he, he he's. I mean, your career may not be able to recover from something like that. You yeah, know? we'll see. It's just I, I don't know. Maybe I guess that just kind of makes sense if he just wants to throw the rock around. Uh, he's uh, that's got. What he wants to do. He's got to start. That's my whole thing. Because he already used his red shirt. He has to start. And you can't go. He already used his red shirt. I mean, he's, oh yeah, last year he did. Yeah, against Ohio, I mean with Ohio State, he threw. He ran two plays last year. He was like fourth on the depth chart at quarterback. Yeah, he saw he saw how good a. Uh, Trout was like, yeah, I ain't, I'm not playing here. Yeah, and they have the other guy too that's in front of him, who's a five star quarterback. But he like he went there knowing that though. Yes, he's an idiot. So some people say this was 4D chess, like he secured the bag because you can't pay high school students nil money uh, in state, so you had to go to school out of state, and he's coming back to play in Texas, and he always planned to. But it's like you were on me with this that it was a dumb like super nearsighted move on his part just to take the bag it's not like his family needed the money his comes from a wealthy family we kind of yeah knew that. i i don't get it like high school like i guess i've never played college football but like from what i see um it's just like there's nothing compares to it like high school especially like south lake has a great tradition there of Texas high school football and i think like that's great that you're going to play the next level, but there's no need to rush it. There's going to be plenty of time for you to play the next level in the high school football with, like, your friends you grew up with. Like, it won't be the same. Like, you'll, great, you'll get friends in college. Don't get me wrong. But the guys you grew up with, it's just different. Winning state with them, playing with them. I'm sure they probably would have won state. Or no, they, they, they'll, they'll probably run into Westlake again and get thumped if they did. Cause Either that... or. But, they'll, but you know what I mean, though. But they'll, they'll make yeah, a deep run. And it's, not like, even... it's just not the same. Not even like just not even playing like your senior year of high school is like a transformative time in like young people's lives. Like it's so many great memories. Just like hey, going to class and hanging out, and, you know, and shooting the shit with your friends. Yeah, it's just like, dude, you, you're already committed to like these high D one schools. Like, just the, all you gotta do is finish school. You got everything else like figured out. Well, just the, enjoy it. The nerds on the internet were like, "Well, it's guaranteed million dollars. You have to take that money, dude. The money. It, there's like what a ninety nine point nine percent chance that million dollars is gonna be sitting for him this year." Like yeah. coming out. Like I was, I got on Instagram the other day, and I, I just like I'm not like I got on Instagram, and like I was like somehow got to the players page at A&M, like the players, and I like all of them had like they sell their stuff at like Aguilan Outfitters or like the CC Creations, like they're like like Leano Ol- O'Neill has like wake them up T-shirts, and JPV has his like JPV T-shirts. Like I like dude, he could have done that anywhere and made all type of money. Yeah, and I held them. Yeah, it's uh, plus the straight cash. I mean, I know Adam just played Evan Stewart's the number one receiver, three hundred k plus an NIL endorsed, like another like a deal on top of it. They gave him three hundred k cash straight, and I'm like, Who did? what? A and M did paid Evan Stewart that. I can A and M pay him. What do you mean? It's NIL money. Oh, actually, university can give him NIL money. I mean, yeah, uh, no, they can't. But with the he got three hundred k cash to come to A and M straight, like that simple. From, that was part of the package. Well, when, what NIL package? I don't know. They have, dude, it's a and Don't ask these questions for how we have this money. They have, like, a general fund, I think, where they pay the players. It's, but that's the thing with NIL is now? Yeah, NIL, you can pay anybody. Texas just cut a deal that's, like, every offensive lineman gets 50 k a year if you're on scholarship. You just have to show what? up. What? Yeah. And they're saying it's for charitable causes, so you show up to a charity event, and they can use your pictures on their stuff for to promote their charity. And it's 50, oh, I yeah. see. But I it's see. every scholarship offense alignment gets fifty k a year. The way you're making it seems like the actual university's paying. No, the universities can't do anything. But the I uni- know, but you made it seem like A and M actually gave him the money. Okay, you know how this works. It's the same thing it was beforehand. It's just above board. Okay, and it's more money because it's above board. It's exactly what it yeah. is. It can't be, you know, snuff, sussing out like it's easy to slide ten k, not hundred k under the under the chair. 
Now you're just like, oh yeah, he endorsed, I'm going to use, all you got to do is give him an endorse, like, oh yeah, we can use your picture to promote whatever, and this is what we pay you, you know. But, but it is kind of backfiring, like, oh, you gave Spencer Rattler two cars <laughs> for the season. Yeah. So they're getting... I'm sure there's something in the clause, like, if you leave, we get these cars. That's fair. I'm sure that's probably in the cause, but who the hell knows what these, you know, what these things look like. The, the market's not set on them is the problem, I think. They don't know. No, you don't really know the value, necessarily, of everything going on with the nil like the market has to set the value and it's kind of the wild west right now i think it's going to come down a little bit probably over the next few it years has to. yeah it's just people are running out of money that's um that's, we just learned there is no running out of money that's so. it's alive. Oh, yeah it's all these coaches it's alive remember when these programs top programs had to cut their hourly wage staff in covid because blah 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 yeah it's bullshit it's complete right back, bullshit right back to, yeah. okay right. Let's let, let's uh, let's run through the last bit of coaches that we could talk about. We did Texas Tech. We did. Uh, we haven't talked about Washington. We talked about Washington State. Nobody cares about Washington. About USC. Yeah, I, they hired a guy. This guy. I told you. We last time you were on, I told you that they were gonna fire Lake. I was like, they're they're gonna fire his ass. And they, they fired. They, and they fired him like two it's days. So, okay. <laughs> two days later, like yeah, it was like a week later after was, the game, they fired him. Oh, that really, Sunday, whatever. Yeah. They fired. I was like, well, this is wild. They're like, okay, he wasn't like. He had one bad year. Anyways, they need to. It was still like it was still like Chris Peterson's regime, and they need to clear house and come with new people. So I don't totally hate the move by that. Just like you should like bring a whole new staff in and like redo it all. Um, Lane got the extension. Fresno State will be looking for a new head coach because that guy went to U at U Dub. Um, it looks like Duke is looking for a new head coach. Yeah, that's true. David Cutcliffe left. He just they he was okay. there forever. Duke. Yeah, it looks like um, this. One of the Cowboys' defensive coaches might be in writing for that, George Edwards. That that you like, know that makes sense. That I know position, that job is A and M's D line coach was in the running for the UIL job or something like that, the Lafayette job. You, the uh, oh, which one? The the D the defense the D tackles coach. I guess something like that. I think I heard. Oh, nice. He but they I think they they kept they, they kept a guy who's oh, in there. Yeah, but so. Elko is not getting any love, huh? No, you think he's like Venables guy? Huh? No. Interesting. It says a lot. I told and you. Says, I told you it was it looking like that, which is good. I'm very happy about that. Colorado State's open. Um, so in Virginia's open, but they both feel like they've got, they're like honed in on the person. His, his name hasn't been rumored at all. Okay, here are all here are all the. Right. We got Florida. We talked about Florida, Fresno State. Well, we really don't care about that much. I'm surprised uh, they fired their coach. They were having a good season. I thought. Who? Fresno State. I was surprised. No, he went to uh, UW. Oh, okay, that okay. That that, made, that explains Washington. everything. Then <laughs> there you go. Yeah, that's who Washington hired. Um, and then we got Louisiana Raising Cajun. They already took, hired, hired their coach. Uh, Louisiana Tech. They got Cumby, which I like. Yep. He's still going to coach a bowl game from for Tech, I believe. Yeah, he LSU's is. Which is Mike Mike Leach versus Sony Cumby, which is hilarious. Because uh, Sony Cumby yeah. played quarterback for Mike Leach at Tech. Ah, uh, that is great. Yeah, that's great. Uh, Miami, uh, we talked about Got that. that. Notre Dame really didn't talk about, which I, okay, let's, let's I'm going to finish this lesson. Let's hop back to Notre Dame. Okay. Uh, Oklahoma, we talked about. Texas Tech, we talked about. UConn, didn't know they needed a head coach, but they'll find one. No, UConn? They already got a guy? They had Jamora. That's right. They had, no, Ar Arkin, uh, uh, Akron. Oh, no. Oh, Jim no, Moore. it was UConn. Yeah, Jim Jim Moore. Moore. yeah, Jim Moore Jr. Yeah, yeah. yeah uh, Akron hired, uh, what, Joe Moorhead. Yeah. That's not bad. Lots of. Lots, lots of. Of, lots of same. same uh, it's too many coaches. Virginia Tech got their guy. They got the Penn State defense coordinator, right? Big yes. Brent Fry or something like that. Okay. We're talking about, okay. So, Notre Dame. I like, I like them keeping in in the house with uh, Marcus Freeman. Um, he sounds like a good guy. He's really young. They, uh. Yeah. They rolled. I like that they kept everything with Tommy Reese on top of it, but he bleeds. In yeah, I think I think that's a big key. Keep it Tommy Reese, keep it your shirts condition coach. So you kind of keep the nucleus in there tight and just hire some other, I some mean, other guys. I would worry about Tommy leaving for uh, another job if the because their offense honestly their offense has been very good this year for Notre Dame. I mean they've been smacking people when they normally yeah. don't. I mean, but, but if you keep Tommy your first year, you should be all right to get to that first oh, traditional. 
Oh, I I know. I just you don't necessarily want to lose him. Maybe if he's you know the special, but he bleeds. Oh, you're, I mean, you're definitely gonna lose him. He bleeds Notre Dame. Maybe he just stays there. I mean, he did play for Notre Dame, so it makes sense. Yeah, maybe. But maybe it's a uh, that'd be kind of awkward though. He leaves and then Freeman gets fired and he comes back. <laughs> Yeah. That would just wouldn't I would, be surprised. I mean, I I wouldn't I either. He, I would just feel weird. You think he feels a certain way about him, like Freeman getting the job and not him? Um, I don't know. I think no. Freeman's older than him, I believe. So it makes sense. Okay. Yeah, he definitely is. I read this. Freeman's thirty four, and Tommy Reese is twenty nine. Shoot, he's that young? Yes, yes. He was just dude. He played under Brian Kelly, I believe, at Notre Dame. Right. Yeah, that's wild, it. right? I know, I know. Uh, what you call it? Marcus Freeman has a rivals uh, account, like uh, had an active rivals account. That's how crazy that was. Oh crap! Yeah, he's twenty nine. Yeah, he didn't. He doesn't feel a certain way at all. Yeah, he's twenty nine. He's, he's barely older than I am. He's actually successful. Yeah, <laughs> yeah he played at Notre Dame from twenty ten to twenty thirteen. Oh, it helps when you play football. It doesn't. It doesn't hurt, especially. Okay. Cool. Yeah. So I I like I mean I like it I liked uh, Freeman's presser I heard but do you also think they kind of are they committed to this or did they keep him in house on the off chance they could have snuck in if they kept everything the same? Uh, I think I think they made that move for to sneak in and like hey this isn't a bad move for our standpoint we like Freeman think he's a good guy yeah yeah this and, that. and i think the committee's more likely to give keep us in because we kept our nucleus together. Uh, that's i mean it's fair i mean they were any i mean they were a michigan loss away from iowa or a cincinnati loss from being in so yeah i think i mean it's the first time they looked for a coach in like 10 years probably so like they're like what the heck how do we do this and they're like ah let's just hire this guy yeah <laughs> so <laughs> It kind of feels how it's amazing. I mean, you never know what things are going to look like. I mean, shit, I told you. Harbaugh was a missed 31-yard field goal away. I mean, a made 31-yard field goal away from being fired last year. Against, I mean, Rutgers missed a 31-yarder in overtime to win the game. And they beat Rutgers, won out, and now look at him. He's on top of the world. So That's true. Life life comes at you super fast. Do um, you want to do quick? Uh, what do you think of the uh, um, the uh, Final Four? Who you who you like in, in this matchup? Uh, so I I like Bama. There's there's no way Michigan Michigan's not gonna be a push push around Georgia. That's like I'm just sorry. I like the under in that game. game. I'll tell you what. I yeah, like you, the- I think I figured out you gotta attack. That's why I thought Ohio State had a semi chance because they could attack them through the air, well, like kind of like what Bama did. Bama just I mean sh- then Bryce Young got loose. With okay, legs, you have to credit Bama. I don't know how you give up seven sacks to Auburn the week before and then absolutely shut down that Georgia pass rush because Georgia's pass rush is elite. And, I mean, yes, we know the DBs are the problem, but you got to block them. Ohio State couldn't block Michigan. They weren't blocking Georgia. So that argument settled itself when Michigan bullied Ohio State yeah. for three hours. Yeah, it's very impressive. Um, you got to hope it – it works. It holds for two more weeks because if it doesn't, they're very bad. Not very bad, but they got a lot of holes when they can't walk. Obviously, that's anybody, any team. Yes. Um, uh, I, yeah, I, I've got Bama winning. It. I mean, that Bryce Young is so good. He's he's great. He's absolutely he's cold blood, stone cold, stone cold killer. Absolutely gonna win the Heisman on Saturday. I'm probably gonna. This is probably gonna come out Sunday, so he'll he'll have won the Heisman. <laughs> I'm gonna assume. Pretty safe to yeah. say. Um. And yeah, Cincinnati can't hang with. I mean, Nick Saban does have a thing against playing mid majors or, lo- or group of five teams and losing so, in bowl yeah, games. We'll see. I, I, I how the hell? I have no idea how A and M beat that Bama team that we watched on Saturday. Oh my gosh, no clue. Okay, hey, A <laughs> and M is there. I, I gotta go, but A yeah. and M is there. They need a dude to play quarterback. They need. They need. They need like two or three dudes. They don't. They, so I, when I watch them, and I, maybe it's just because I have these A and M lenses on. It just like we don't have dudes when I watch every of those other schools. Like, like we don't have a Michi. Like we don't have a we, we uh, don't like have a, offense. A o- like, offensive we guys. We yes. Well, we have like don't get me wrong. Um, the defense has dudes. An, a, Anaya Smith is very good. Don't get me wrong. I like Anaya Smith, but like we just don't have that like that that cat, like dude like that. I well, just don't know what it is. I don't have, know how you find it. And like we have three top twenty receivers coming in this year. So. So, well, I hope one of them are like that. They got to be. They got to be. be. We have the number 13, number 3, and number 
third or 20th, I think, receivers coming in this year on top of the number two quarterback. So I, I, I agree. You need somebody that can throw the ball, though, on top of it. No, that's what I'm saying. You need a quarterback, too, like that. Like, yeah, yeah. All these schools are like that are like in it. I mean, except Georgia and that's what Georgia's problem. They yes, gotta, that's, they gotta they're keep. very limited on offense is the problem. Yeah. So. Kirby's got Kirby. Kirby's got a higher offense coordinator who can recruit a quarterback too. <sighs> Easier said than done, my friend. It feels like there's not as many quarterbacks out there that uh. I don't know. I don't. He's got to. He's got to go straight. <laughs> just get, just take Lincoln's leftover. Say, hey Lincoln, where's these quarterbacks? That you not did not commit to you. <laughs> I'll take that one. <laughs> That's very fair. I know. I love Ohio State fans were bitching about C.J. Stroud early in middle of the year. I'm like, actually watch a bad quarterback play and then talk to me about C.J. Stroud. C.J. Stroud is great. Okay? Stop. He's a freshman. He's not going to be perfect. He's going to be, you know, it's hilarious when teams don't understand, like, actually what terrible quarterback play looks like. It's rough. Yeah, it's painful. All right. All right. I'll see go. you. This is fun. Hard Drop it on Sunday. Take it easy. All right. See you. Sounds good. All right. All right, I'll be wrapping this up here. Um, yeah, good. always good to talk to Terrell. We're trying to do this more often every couple of weeks or so. Um, again, if you like the stuff, subscribe to the channel if you're listening. Uh, we got the live video on YouTube, just my beautiful face this week. But, uh, yeah, subscribe to the channel. Hit the notification bell so you get the videos doing daily content on the channel, up, sports update videos, backyard bookies on Fridays. So, yeah, we'll uh, see you all next time.